Oh, uh, hello there. Well, I, I hope the batteries in the mixer hold out long enough for this. There might be a little bit of echo in my voice here from that, but uh, hopefully we'll make through this okay. This is, again, from last week. This is not yesterday, because uh, I still have stuff. I'm like a week behind on these things. Uh, I'm still working all kinds of overtime. The overtime is slacking off a little bit. I only had to work a few hours today on Saturday. Uh -huh. Hopefully next week that'll be over with for a while. Don't mind the money, but uh, I'd really rather not work all this overtime. I I need my beauty rest, and and I feel really ugly here because I just don't get none at all, whatsoever. No. Uh, this is just another slugfest on downtown. There's very few people at the beginning, and we pick up several as we go along. So by the end of this, it's actually uh, fairly full teams on both sides. Oh. Yeah, my life is very dull these days, I have to say. I uh, don't do much of anything but work. I've... Uh, I did manage to I did manage to come across a bunch of uh, audiobooks for old uh, Robert Heinlein novels that, that I've read long ago and haven't read since. And so I've been listening to some of these old old books on audio for the first time in years. I had it was it I had uh, Starship Troopers, which was a really nice edition, and. Uh, uh, Starman Jones, and now I'm starting in on. Uh, Tunnel in the Sky, and these are all these are all great old Heinlein books. I mean, I always was a real big fan of Heinlein. He was always one of my favorite old old uh, science fiction writers. He's a uh, you know he's a uh, yeah yeah he does he does get off into these into these uh, into these weird uh, political ideological uh, rants that he goes on, and and frankly I think he's I think he's you know ironically rather naive on several points. You know, considering that he was a naval officer and everything, and, but he wasn't a combat officer, you know. Um, I agree with a lot of the things that he says, but I think he, I, do, I do think he goes overboard, and I, I think some things he's just really naive about. But I don't, I don't like to belabor the point, because, you know, the fact is, aside from that, uh, you know, despite all of that, he's a, he was he was a, he was a, he was a first-class writer. I mean, I think he was up there with a lot of the classic. You know, a lot of the a lot of the writers that considered you know that are considered like uh, real classic writers. You know, I think he's a, I think I think there's times when he's as good as Hemingway. You know, maybe not all the time, but there's 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 parts in his books that that'll that, that'll really strike you that way sometimes. Uh, once or twice. Yeah, he was a uh, he was an interesting character, and he did come up with a lot of you know interesting ideas. You know, for the first time that have been you know it's right that's right that they call him the dean of science fiction and everything. And, and among other things, I think I think a lot of his books would just make incredibly great movies if they were ever done right. You know, I know I know a few of his movies have been a few of his books have been done as movies, but the ones I've seen they just haven't been done very well. You know, they they always tend to. Uh, Oh, I don't know. They just weren't handled. They, they just didn't. I guess that. I guess the acting or the directing talent just wasn't there because I know the. I know the writing material was there if it was handled correctly, but they just didn't know how to do it. You know. Oh well. I always get that impression with uh, with Starman Jones or Starship Troopers. I know they made a movie out of Starship Troopers, and boy, that movie sucked. I hated that movie. That was terrible. I mean, um, I knew it was going to be bad. Uh, the minute the minute I read about it and found out that it wasn't going to have powered armor in it, I mean, seriously, you're going to do Starship Troopers and you're not going to have powered armor. My God, these people were on drugs. These people were on serious fucking drugs. You don't do Starship Troopers without powered armor. My God, what were they thinking? That and the other problem is, you know, if you're gonna do a book like that, you gotta, you know, you gotta make a decision right off the bat. You know, are you gonna, what are you gonna do with the, with the, with the political rants in that book? I mean, he goes, he goes seriously off in that book about, you know, about how you, you shouldn't be a citizen unless you're a combat veteran, and, and you know, and basically like that, you know, and, um, and I agree in corporeal punishment, but damn, you know, the guy is. The guy got called a Nazi, you know, 
the guy got called a fascist for that book, and I can see how it happened. I, I'm sure I don't think he was. Uh, and I agree with a lot of things that he says, but you know, uh, I just don't think I just don't think he. I just don't I just don't think he was right about some of those things. You know, about, about I just don't think that what I just don't think that the kinds of things that he advocated so so completely there would have added up to the kind of utopia that he apparently thought that they would or, or or postulated that would for the purpose of that novel anyway although it read really well you know it's an excellent novel excellent it's a great book you know uh, I just don't think the politics are that plausible in reality you know and I suspect he probably did believe in them more than that but you know, it's a minor. It's a minor complaint to me. I don't. I don't. I don't hold that against him at all. You know, because you know the guy. The guy was brilliant. That's all. I, that's all I can say. Oh uh, well. I think it would be a challenge to make a make a movie out of some of these books. Like, for example, Starman Jones. The great thing about Starman Jones, to me, the great thing. I mean, a lot of people that a lot of people that if they try to make a movie, oh my God, I hate it when that happens. God, yeah, I think I'm doing so well, and then I turn around and they've taken the, the node right back while I was looking the other way for a second. God, I hate that. No, the great thing about Starman Jones is that uh, the whole premise, the whole plot swings. The whole plot turns on the uh, on the turns on the situation where uh, they're navigating interstellar space. Uh, basically. Uh, basically by making use of uh, naturally formed uh, space warps. The whole premise is that is that space is uh, naturally crumpled up like a sheet of paper in four dimensions. There's these pre-existing warps throughout the universe, you know. And um, if you push yourself over the speed of light at any given point, um, away from a star where you can map out the warps, you have you, then you have a good chance of jumping to some predetermined point somewhere else. You don't get to determine where you're going to go. Where you're going to go just depends on uh, the way the space is warped at the location where you pass the speed of light. So they, they've got some particular spots where they know what happens if they go over the speed of light at that point, and that takes them to, that, that takes them to, uh, to pre-map destinations. Okay, well, that's, that's part of the premise. The other premise is that... Grab your orb. The math and the math that goes into uh, plotting to navigating through these naturally occurring warps, the math required to do this is all done is all done on uh, <laughs> electronic computers that are programmed by hand at the time of navigation by people who work out the, the problems on paper or in their heads or using tables of logarithms printed in books. And then they program the computers by sw by flipping banks of switches, the way that people program uh, computers in the 1950s or 40s, before they invented punch cards. Okay, they're flying through interstellar space, and they're using this kind of computer technology. It's it's you know it's it's an old joke at this point. People often point that out about old science fiction as, oh, they're using space warp technology, but they don't have computers. You know. <laughs> And it's brilliant, you know, it's brilliant because he builds the whole plot on that. You know, you couldn't, you couldn't rewrite this, you couldn't rewrite this story using modern computer technology and have it be the same story. I've, I've tried to think about how to do it and you really can't do it, you know, because the whole premise of the story is that the hero has this uh, e uh, eidetic uh, photographic memory, eidetic memory. And so he's memorized all the logarithm tables that they use to do their navigation. And late in the book, you know, they're on this starship and the starship is lost. And, and the previous uh, navigator was an idiot who managed to get the books lost. And now they don't, now their only hope of getting back to where they were is that is that this guy has this eidetic memory and he remembers all these logarithms and there's no other copies of them on the, on the ship. This is the premise of the story, you know. You can't you can't write around that, you know. Uh, one of the other na one of the other main astrogators earlier worked himself to death doing this programming work, you know, because he didn't trust anyone else to do it, because the other navigator was a fucking idiot. What is why? And uh, but he basically died of a heart attack because he was working himself so hard to do these navigation. Pro you can't write around this, you know. There's no way. There's no way to do this with modern computers and have the same kind of drama. You can't do it. If 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 someone made a movie out of this book, 
I would tell them, you know, look, just just do it, just do it the way he wrote it, you know. Have them flying through space with 1950s computers. Seriously, do it that way. I mean, it would be, it would be weird, but it would be weird, but it would be a better story, you know. Yeah, it would be, it would be brilliant. I would love to see somebody make a movie that way and not try to be so fucking realistic all the time. Ah, uh, oh well. Oh well, it's a, it's a, it's a brilliant book just because just because of the way the uh, the Sam character dies. You know, he's a that's that's another one of that character. He's a, he does he does a he does a Horatio at the bridge move at the end and, and he dies that way. And this is this character that that Heinlein has spent the entire novel building up into this huge likable character. You know, and then he kills him at the end of the book. You know, and it's brilliant. You know, he he kills him he kills himself to save the main character. You know, it's 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 just it's just it's just one of those it's just one of those points where you read that and you're like, my God, he was on his game that day when he wrote that shit for sure. Oh well, that's about all I have time for is, is is listening to these these ridiculous books that I read when I was a kid. Got to come back to after all these years. There's probably about a million like that. Oh well, I guess I'll probably have to wait 20 years for Hollywood to get through their comic book phase. Oh God! Attack the, tank. the guy in the bender just just ran into me, and, and and I was gonna try to dive through this gap and get into the prime, but. Now I can't dislodge the vehicle and I have to jump back to the to the center because I can see that, that Red's making a push to take it back and they are going to take, take it back. Mode. It's probably just as well that I didn't get through that gap because if I'd made it to the Prime, there's no way I could have took the Prime down in time to prevent... I would have been, been, been stuck up there. Oh well. Didn't get back there in time anyway, I suppose. Yeah, that's about all I have time for is reading these books. I, can't keep much of an eye on. There's not much going on at current events except the weather's going crazy and Elon Musk is up there still going crazy. He seems to be doing quite well with these batteries. I, I caught a headline the other day that says it, that claims that he sold like 800 million dollars worth of these uh, these home batteries, which is which is pretty awesome. Maybe someday they'll be cheap enough for me to get one. I wouldn't mind having a system like that. I'd like to put solar panels on this dump. Well, I'd like to do a lot of things, but I'm basically too cheap to spend the money on it. One of these days, before I die of old age, I should probably try to do something like that. It would be well worthwhile, I think. I'm basically still hoping that I'm, st I'm basically still waiting for the great big breakthrough that's going to give me an electric car that I can afford, you know, with a battery that has a reasonable amount of charge on it, and so on and so forth. Ah, well, you can see how this match has been going. We've been losing terribly, but you know. Basically, we're going to pick up a couple extra people here and win this out. In the meantime, it's just a pretty dramatic match, I think. Yeah. I don't know what else to tell you, man. I mean, I just, I just have no time to do anything. Uh, read a few read a few dumb books. Uh, I watch these... Uh, uh, watching this YouTube channel of uh, Forgotten Weapons, which is really interesting. There's this guy who basically basically goes to auctions and, and and does little demonstrations on all kinds of obsolete guns and shit that he picks up somewhere. That's he's an interesting that's an interesting channel. I don't know how I got I don't know how I got to my childhood without YouTube and all these things. My my god life was dull. You know, all we had was TV for God's sake and three channels. It's been a it's been a huge it's been a great thing to me to have all these to have all this stuff to check out. I can't but think that the world is a better place because of it. You know, I mean, can you imagine all the creativity that's 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 spurred on by this kind of thing? You know, the news in the last few years I've noticed has just been has just been crammed full of uh, you know excited news reporting about all these amazing technical advances that are going on. None of which you'll ever see in reality, of course, but it keeps your hope going. You know, I mean, because what the hell? You know, I mean. There's a lot going on, I think. I mean, and not just in the medical field. You know, I'm sick to death of hearing about medical advances because the medical system is so screwed up anyway. I mean, I don't give a shit how good the medical technology is. I can't afford it. I can't even afford. I can't even afford the fucking health insurance. Yeah, well, I don't want to get off on that though. That's not really worthwhile. Oh, oh, oh.
Yeah, I guess all uh, you know. Well, what the heck, you know? What can I say? I'm cheap. You know, the only thing I think I can afford really is is to, is to upgrade this computer every once in a while. I'm thinking I have to upgrade the uh, the keyboard now because I because I basically worn this one out. This is a they didn't have mechanical keyboards like they do now when I bought this thing about four or five years ago. It's just one of these rubber mat jobs. And the, and the rubber matting under the under the keys that I use to fire and shit is broken down and those keys are all depressed and warped and shit now. They still work. But it's getting to that point. You can't get spare parts for these things either, which is kind of annoying. I really like this keyboard. I hate to get rid of it because I'm so used to it. But I suppose at some point I'm going to have to break down and get one of these mechanical keyboards and see if I can figure out... See if I can it's figure out what's supposed mode. to be so damn great about a mechanical keyboard. Supposedly, the only thing I can think is that supposedly you can hold down several keys at once without uh, without without losing the signal. You know, you can hold down eight keys at once and have those eight key signals uh, processed accurately in the order that you press them. Supposedly, you know, I guess that's the advantage. I'm not sure how much of an advantage that is. That is, I mean, I don't use that many keys in here anyway. But, if I'm going to replace this board, that's probably the kind of thing I can get. The only problem is that I don't really see any that, you know, I like as much as this one. Basically, um, not for any good reason. This one just has a whole lot of function keys that I never use anyway. But I want those keys, you know. I might need them someday. I must have the function keys that I've never used. I think I've used them once. Yeah, I did use them once. I used them on, on, uh, on Toxic at one point. Because when I first got Toxic going, uh, there was a bug. Oh, are we done already? We're not done yet. No, we got a long way to go. It's 65 to 100. There's about three and a half minutes to go. We're going well into overtime on this one for sure. We still got a. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to the we'll get to the we'll get to the core on this one. Yeah, about the only time I ever used them function keys is on Toxic because it had a bug in it when I first installed in it, and. Uh, because of the because I didn't use the default uh, the default key mapping for firing and so on. If you didn't use the default key mapping, then every time you died, uh, the key the key that I would use to fire was the one I was required to push to uh, to respawn. So since it wasn't since it was wired up to fire instead of respawn, I couldn't respawn. And there was no way around that. Nothing in the I and I files would. I could. There was no rebind I could do through the I and I, I and I files to fix that. I ended up having to use these function keys to uh, to record a macro to reassign the keys back to respawn with one key, and then do the respawn, and then use another function key to to rebind the keys back to fire. And I had to play the game for about two days until they fixed that bug. Grab the shape charge. And I haven't used those buttons since. That's. But I must have those keys. I must have them. And and none of these mechanical keys really. None of these mechanical keyboards has the full, the full array of, of function keys that I do not use, but must have. And they don't have the they don't have the onboard volume control either, which I actually do use a lot. Although half the time it doesn't work, but I must have it. Yeah, well. Attack the tank node. I'm sure it'll happen sooner or later. And it'll probably be another Logitech, even though I guess Corsair has the better... I, I guess the Corsair mechanical keyboards have a better uh, better reputation, I guess. But I like Logitech. I, Logitech, uh, their Logi Logitech stuff just is just rugged. It just fucking keeps working. It doesn't break down like all these, like all these fancy mice that I get sometimes done. Logitech just shit. Logitech shit just works. That's that's what I like about it. Where are we at with this? Oh, still fighting over the center. It's winding down to about a minute to overtime now, and it's getting pretty desperate because if we don't make some headway on this, we're gonna lose for sure. Uh, we'll get timed out. Uh, we don't have enough of the map to to win on a t to win on a to win on timeout. We got it. We got to take some notes. We gotta at least take this node, and we and we pretty much have to take at least the uh, the tank node. Although we prefer to take the, uh, the the enemy node and hit the core, that would be the best thing to do, the most likely thing to do. I'm not sure we'd win even with well, maybe with the center and the tank we win. 
but we definitely got to have more nodes than we have now, and we're having tr and we're having trouble holding on to the center even. I don't think I think we're going to lose it again here. Oh, maybe not. Looks like we got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's a whole list of books I'd love to make a movie out of. Uh, An Alien Heat by Mike Moorcock, that would be a good one. Uh, e for Effort uh, by the man whose name I forget, actually, at this point. But that's that's a brilliant novel. Mechanical for Leibowitz, that would be a brilliant one. Cat's Cradle, that would be a brilliant movie. But I gotta wait for I gotta wait for uh, for Hollywood to get past all this. I guess I guess I guess I guess whenever Hollywood gets past all this this comic book shit, maybe maybe they'll come around to these things at some point. Maybe. Although you know who knows what Hollywood will do. They'll probably get all off into Shakespeare or something. God knows what they'll do. Yeah, they'll do Shakespeare with ray guns probably. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. The enemy prime node. That would probably be pretty cool. Pretty good actually. Oh well. Yeah, I wouldn't be too far off from, from what some of these artsy types do with Shakespeare anyway. I've seen Shakespeare done as gangsters and Shakespeare done as movie executives and all kinds of crazy ass shit. Attack the tank I've got the ore. I kind of prefer just a straight production, really, if they're going to do something like that. But yeah, it looks interesting, I guess. Shakespeare is gangsters in Shakespeare's is gangsters done as an opera. There you go. Oh yeah, I saw that on TV about about uh, about three weeks ago. I watched about two minutes ago, tw two minutes of it and shit. So you know, I'm not going to sit here for three. Shakespeare is bad enough when he speaks in English, you know. I'm not going to sit here and try to understand what's going on in 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 sung Italian, man. Forget it. It's not happening. I'm not. You know, I'm not. I'm not doing that. Oh yeah, we're in overtime now, and yeah, we're gonna we're losing at this rate is what's going on. We gotta take the enemy prime. That's what that's what that's what, that's that is the situation. Grab the uh, uh, yeah, I, I have nothing to tell you. I I'm just waiting for reaction engines to get their saber engine going, so I can so I can see some real space exploration for a change instead of all this ridiculous rocket based stuff. Oh, I got the nuke. We got a chance here. Yeah, we're gonna take we're gonna take the prime. We're gonna take the prime now. Yeah, the the center's up. Get the nuke out. And if somebody doesn't shoot this thing down, and there's nobody in there defending, so the prime's gonna go right down. I'm grab this vehicle and try to get up in there and hold it before Red can get back in there and take get their shit together. Yeah, they've got a Red up in there already. He must have he must have hit and hide one of these doorways. And unless I ditch out of this vehicle pretty quick. Yeah, okay, we got one of you. Um, yeah, that was bad Attack luck. Well, that was Crayland, so that probably wasn't luck, so... Nice try, though. That is what we're gonna have to do, and we're kinda running out of time to do it. We're gonna have to make another... Oh, we got the Prime, we got the prime down again, so... That's another hope coming up here. Let's... Oh, wait, wait a minute. Okay, oh, that, that was... That was... That is bad luck there. That's what I hate to do. That's one disadvantage, uh... I'm pretty sure I can disable the windows that with the key, the, key, the keyboard that, that that takes me out to the desktop like that. And I really ought to get around to doing it, but because <sighs> it is possible to lose a match from doing from pulling that. You don't want to do that. Grab the sheep charge. Okay. I think we got this nailed down now. We don't have the tank node, and we do kind of want to get over here into the uh, into the. Uh, do kind of want to get up there and do some damage to the core, and I would have kind of wanted to hold on to that vehicle. But let me follow this guy in, and we'll see if we can get out here. I'll get a shock combo off, and maybe even kill somebody for once. Yeah, well, I probably just nailed him on the ground, and that's gonna just about do it right there. Okay, that was a real nice match. Have you? 